Hello, so today we are looking at the Divine Codes Oracle by Dark Moon Crystals and Leah Showman. So this is my sort of review after having worked with it. I'm deciding to do some things differently this month. Instead of waiting till the end of the month to do my review and show the pairings, I'm going to do it after having worked with it for a week. And then at the end of the month, if I've changed my opinion on the deck after having worked with it for a couple more weeks, I will let you know. But um, we'll see how we go with this. So this is a 46 card deck. I saw this on Pure Red Velvet. Straight away, the color scheme is up my alley. One sec, I just have to tell my kids. There we go, I shush them. So we've got this beautiful lilac rose theme with a rosary, and that's just all the things I love. I freaking die for the aesthetic of this deck. This is just stunning. It's a rose petal finish, which I think is beautiful. It's a really well-made box with a magnetic closure. So this is the, sorry, cat hair everywhere, guys. Too many cats. I have too many cats. I am a certifiable cat lady now. I'm getting close to probably having a mental illness. Um, so we've got Divine Codes Oracle. So we've got the guidebook here, and it is, once again, a beautiful rose petal finish. And it's glossy, full color deck. So you've gotten about the deck, which is an introduction, which I think is very sweet. And then you've got the card descriptions. So they all vary. This one has two pages where it's sort of got about the card and then a little poem, so to speak. Um, but some of them have a lot less, like here. You can see some don't have as much. So they do vary. Some have pictures, some do not. But it does it the job. Uh, it's definitely a lot better than the creator's other deck, which was, I think, Starlight Frequencies that I ended up rehoming because the guidebook just added nothing to the cards and I needed more explanations. Especially with Oracle, I need you to tell me more. So we've got another card here, which is just a nice message. The backs are oh, just yummy and delicious. I adore them. So the backs are beautiful. They've got this stunning, stunning lilac or dusty rose matte edging with glitter you can't see it on the camera i'm pretty sure but it is gorgeous it's probably one of my favorite ever matte edgings because i love colorful matte edgings but with the sparkles it's just that little bit mwah, chef's kiss so this is the deck the cardstock is rose petal and at first i said it was easy to shuffle but then after having worked with it i noticed that they clump so for me, I ended up doing a bit of a shuffle and then I would just fan out until I felt like, okay, that's the card. That's the way that I had to end up picking my cards instead of just shuffling and waiting for jumpers or waiting till I felt like it was the one because too many stuck together and then you won't get all of the cards. Maybe if you are a riffle shuffle, it's different. But like I said, I just don't riffle shuffle, so I can't tell you. In terms of the cards, I'll talk about them while I show you the companion decks. So this card deck though very similar energy to the Rose Oracle, I will say that. Um, it's got that feminine, starseed, divine, mother kind of quality to it. So I used, the two decks that I used with this are the Ethereal Alchemist Tarot and the Deep Place Oracle um, because I felt like they had similar energies, but they weren't too same same. Like the Rose, the Rose Oracle was too same same. Even though I like a sort of harmony and congruence with the decks that I pair with things. I don't want it so similar that it's just like you're doubling down. Um, I need a little bit of variance. So I use these two because they both also have that sort of cosmic element to the deck, which is what this deck definitely has more of, the, like I said, that star seed, uh, soul kind of quality rather than earthly realm. Um, so this deck, I love collage decks and I actually don't have a lot of collage decks um, which sucks so I am looking to expand my collage decks because it's definitely a medium that I really enjoy like I love the art of it in this particular deck there are definitely cards that I really really love the aesthetic of and then there are cards that's like eh, not so much um, so it, it was I'd say 70 30 in terms of how many cards I like and how many I don't like um, I do like the space element. I'm a bit of a space girly, so I love this card, Mystic Messenger. It makes me lol. I don't know what it is with the lady in the satin sheets and the sunnies um, with the triangles and the moon and the pegasi and the code, the binary code in the background, but I just like it. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck. So there were definitely, like I said, some I love, some that were really cool, um, some that are a bit meh. 
but with how this cart this deck worked i definitely found that it's not a deck i want to use just on its own i do prefer to pair it with other decks to get a bit more clarity because sometimes the message wasn't so obvious and i had to um clarify with other decks like how, how does this relate to me exactly and what is the exact message um i also found that it worked even better if i had a specific question rather than just a general what do you want me to know today um i felt like that general message of the day got old real quick and i had to um add some difference in my deck pulls and actually ask specific questions or themes and then it was a little more interesting to use the the voice is definitely supportive so this deck is one full of encouragement and love it is so loving and it's so um caring and uplifting so i did definitely find this deck is one that you don't have to worry about <laughs> like um anything too heavy or dark or that makes you really have to do shadow work it is like i said um quite supportive and i did appreciate that especially at this time so i did end up using it a lot for some sort of relationship readings in regards to helping me navigate my my breakup and some of the emotions that um were coming up and pairing it with these two like i said these two decks also have quite a loving energy but are a bit more stern than this one so this one's definitely a bit more hey this is what you need to focus on and the deep place is the same um the deep place can be a bit more uh look at the shadow side so they did sort of balance out the absolute positivity of this deck a bit which i think you, you sort of need the bitter with the sweet um so they were really good anchor points for this deck which otherwise also on its own can be quite up in the ether uh not so grounded even though these are also both quite celestial spacey starlighty star seedy decks um they still because of their tone help to like weigh down the messages of this one but i did like i absolutely it makes me happy to use it i guess that's what i'm gonna say do i love it not yet we're not quite in love but um i have enjoyed using it i have wanted to pull from it um every day this week so that's like a great sign to me to have the willingness and the desire to see what the messages are um it was great with that it did give me varied messages sometimes with decks some particular decks they'll just give me the same card over and over again and even though i felt like i've done the work with that card um and that's just a sign for me that the, the deck's not for me whereas this one was just like hey we're going to focus on this today or we're going to focus on that today um there is almost a little bit of sadness as though but then i think the sadness could just be coming from me <laughs> uh, because i'm quite sad so but this one it was sort of like melancholy maybe a little bit but a bit like oh honey i can see that you're really going through it here's my shoulder to cry on i think okay that's 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 what i'm feeling from it like it was a shoulder to cry on in a little bit in a way um but like it's all going to be okay like don't don't worry about it you you're a star seed or a soul or a spirit and all of these earthly experiences will not last okay i have to pause here because this bloody card i love it to bits and pieces there are cats in boxes with butterflies and the card is multidimensional. Your soul is multifaceted. Release anything that puts you in a box or feel limiting. This card is everything to me. It just makes me so happy. And I just, oh, even if I only kept the deck for this card, that's like enough. That's enough for me to be like, you can stay because that card just gives me everything. Um, here we go. Inner balance with three of swords and stillness. I feel like this was like, I had to pause on this message here. But I, I have enjoyed it. Um, so I think it's one, like I said, there's some cards that I don't love, but in on the whole, as a whole, um, I have really enjoyed it. And I'm glad it's in my collection. I do have quite a few of these sort of similar energy decks. I've just realized after using this card, um, this deck, sorry. So that might be something I'll be like, okay, maybe we don't need any more of these sort of star CD cosmic feminine decks. <laughs> we've, we've got enough. But I will obviously use it with some other ones as well so that um, we can 
see how it plays with sort of different decks that maybe aren't so, are so similar as this one. So I'll read from the guidebook so you can see how it's written before I finish up. So we have Songs of the Sea. Sing, tone or hum with the sirens for throat chakra activation. Listen to the ocean waves ebb and flow, creating melodic tunes. The ocean is a vast, a boundless body of wisdom. Your energetic body is being cleansed by the oceanic codes of depth and majesty. It is time to clear your throat and to use your voice. The blockages you feel within your human body, within the human mouth and throat, they lay there because you do not use your voice to its full potential. You are here to speak, you are here to teach, you are here to be a guide for those around you and for those that have not yet found you, but they will. Your energy draws them in now without you even realizing it. Your soul is speaking to the universal energy. This subconscious energy that you hold, it is one that others can feel and that others are drawn to. So, like I said, I do like the write-ups. Sometimes they have poems um, as well, which I think is very, very sweet. I love that the cards have the number on there so you can find it easily and that they do have a little sentence there. So if you don't want to go into the guidebook, you can just say, well, I'm the creation and I am the alchemist um, with, you know, whatever cards, your six of swords in the underworld. So I'll look at that little symmetry. I did enjoy it. I think it is great. It's definitely um, one that I'm going to keep in my collection. Uh, we'll see how I go with it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I am keeping it. I, I do adore it. So thank you, Pure Red Velvet, for casting my attention upon it. It's not one that I would use very frequently, though. I can tell you that already. It is sort of one that I would use sporadically, um, but it's one that I will use. I can, I can tell that I would pull it out in the future but that is everything so that's everything that I've kind of uh, come to from using it for a week this week was rather chaotic though as well with the cats so to be honest it didn't probably get the absolute attention that the other decks might get because I was just so um, caught up with the kitten and integrating her into the house it's a, it's a lot of bloody work to be honest with you and it's not something I'm ever going to do again kittens this is the last kitten I'll ever have but um, I did enjoy what time I did spend with it so I, I did manage to just carve out five minutes a day to do a reading but um, I hope that wherever you are you were having a divine morning afternoon or evening and as always stay wild star child